Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm continuing with more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. Kathy asked, I wondered if any of the water scenes were real. You mentioned the pond had been drained. Uh, were there any real areas used in the series, other than the ocean, of course? Well, the pond was filled in, so that was real water, but it was a man-made pond on the back lot of the studio. When we went on location uh, more locally to a place called Franklin Canyon, there was a reservoir there. So we did see water. Sometimes there were scenes where uh, people were fishing or something there. Um, mostly that water you saw uh, from a distance. It was just a beautiful backdrop more than you actually saw people in that water. Um, so other water that people got in was probably pretty much Drusilla's pond on the back lot of the studio. When we saw little streams and stuff, there was, they could create running water through little creeks and things like that on the back lot. So uh, all of that was just sort of man-made. And then um, anytime it rained, they created that rain because you couldn't time it in Southern California to say, well, we need rain on Thursday or sometime this week during the filming. It just didn't, you couldn't count on that. And you couldn't say, oh, it's raining tomorrow. Let's hurry up and go shoot rain scenes. So they would bring in very tall, like sort of sprinkler heads. We call rain birds and they just turn those on and dump water on us. Uh, so, uh, so that was all of our rain scenes. This is a question from Peace Shepherding. Uh, when directors are assigned to episodes, do the more established get their choice of episodes, plots? And um, uh, I think there was some choices involved in that. I think directors, some of our uh, more regular directors could uh, turn down things. They might be offered an episode and say, mm, no, I don't really want to do that one for one reason or another, or they weren't available. They had a conflict with another shoot. So they might have had some latitude, but I think in a lot of cases, it was just, hey, we'd like you to do this episode, and it was a yes or a no. Um, I don't know that anybody necessarily knew, well, they're, we're going to do this such and such an episode. And it's not like directors got to read all the scripts and then decide which ones they wanted to do. I don't think that happened at all. I think sometimes they were going to have a particular director maybe direct four or five, six episodes in a season, and they may have know some of the storylines, but I think it was it was sort of, well, you know, we'd like you to do this, and and I think for the most part, they were willing to do the episodes that they were asked to do. Um, and then you also asked, uh, what occurs when actors in a series want to direct? Are their preferences considered? Um, I think look, when actors on our show directed, because Ralph and Richard, Ralph directed more episodes than Richard. Richard directed a couple. Um, I imagine that was them via their agent, you know, during uh, a negotiation saying that, you know, Richard would like to direct an episode or perhaps they say, they said, well, we would like to offer him that opportunity. And clearly Ralph enjoyed directing and was good at it. So he um, obviously had an interest in doing more of the episodes. Um, I don't know if Richard was not as interested in directing. And so after doing a couple or he felt that it was tough to do double duty, that is tricky to, to act and direct. Um, it's, it's a lot more work. Um, so I'm not quite sure what Richard's interests were. I know that he has not gone on to do a lot of directing. So my belief would be that his preference is acting and that's where his, his love really is. Um, we also did have, um, we had assistant directors who directed, our script supervisor directed an episode. Um, so we had different people that had an opportunity after having worked in another capacity on the show to also direct an episode. Um, I don't know that they had preferences. Whether Ralph had preferences about episodes he wanted to direct and whether whether they asked him, they may have asked him because depending on how heavy his storyline was, how much John Walton had to do in an episode, could have impacted whether or not 
Ralph felt that it was an episode he wanted to direct or whether the producers felt it was an episode that would be good for him to direct or not. So things like that may have come into play, but I don't have the details of it. A question here from Sounds Great Greg, who said, I'd love to hear all about your preparation process as an actor. I know this show began when you were quite young, so wonder how this process evolved over time. Uh, I mean, mostly when I was young, uh, I think some of the others, Cami talked about that, was that you knew you needed to know your lines, you needed to hit your marks, and you needed to not flub. <laughs> so those were sort of the basics when you were young, is knowing the lines and then understanding the attitude of the character. Uh, for me, with you know Mary Ellen, I, I knew she was... You know, she was tomboy, she had an attitude, she was full of herself, she was combative, but in a fun way. Uh, so that was kind of taking what was in the scenes and and just uh, recognizing it from that perspective. Um, you know, other work that I had done earlier, similar, it was sort of what is the emotional state of this particular person you know if you want to just get very basic are they happy are they sad are they scared and just understanding what the emotion of the character was and then relating you know learning the lines and playing the emotion and that was kind of the simplicity of what i did when i was very young then as i grew and learned more then there might be more things that I began to take in in terms of understanding uh, more layers to what was happening with a character. You just sort of start getting that as you read a script and you understand that all of what's going on for a character, what their what their journey is through an episode. Um, you know, say for instance, the minstrel. You know, Mary Ellen's feeling very frustrated. She. She wants to go explore the world. She's tired of being on Walton. So she's feeling restless. So that whole thing happens. And then she meets this boy and, and you know she's smitten and he's traveled all over the world. So now she's got this crush. So you have that whole thing happening and this idea of, of this dream that her life could be different and that he's so exciting and it's new. And so there's that whole piece. And then the disappointment, the humiliation, when he basically says she's a child and he's going to leave. Um, so there were all those sort of elements. So understanding in any given scene where, uh, where my character was on that journey, was she before having met him? Was she in the excitement of this crush and this dream of this other world, or was it afterwards and just, you know, now she's been completely deflated and and how is she going to move forward? So again, those are sort of broad strokes of what went on. We never, you asked if, um, did I pick up other tips from fellow actors? I think I did from watching the way some of the um, the adults approach things not that we ever talked about it and just you know watching people who did really good work i think you just you pick up things and um watching how committed they were to the work or watching something like how i talked about in the typewriter when richard was like yelling at me and off camera he totally did that for my close up to give me all of that emotion to respond to. So things like that were um, were things that I learned to be there for my fellow actor and to not just throw it away because I was off camera because there's somebody over there who were teammates, were partners, you know, we're doing a scene and to try and give them as much help as possible for them to be able to do the best performance they can. So things like that, but I don't remember ever really digging in and discussing scenes with any of the other regular actors. Maybe occasionally with a guest actor that I maybe had a lot of scenes with, we might have a few conversations, but mostly it moves too fast. You're just like, know your lines, go, you know, walk through, here's the camera, this is what's gonna be going on, good. 
go away for a few minutes while we set the lights, come back, shoot it, move on. So there wasn't long periods of time to have those kinds of conversations. And I know for a lot of us, we did, our work did evolve as we, as we grew up and matured. And, you know, for a number of us, I started studying, Mary started studying. I'm not sure who else did just to try and improve our craft. So that sort of thing did happen. Um, let's see. And then, oh, so then you were asking that um, about really appreciating all these various different tips about how you hit a mark or how you find your light or how you feel the camera. Um, and would I share more of this? So uh, I'm totally willing to do things like that. I don't know how interesting that is to uh, sort of our viewers in general. So maybe people can throw um, throw a response into the comments and let me know if more about, you know, the process of acting or the details, the technical aspects of, of how some of these things happen, if that's of interest to you. And if there seems to be enough interest, maybe I'll do a segment about that. And if there's not, then maybe I'll do a, you know, a side special segment and, you know, the handful of people who'd like to see it can watch it. That's what I have for this segment of Ask Judy. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons, more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. And if there's particular topics you'd like me to consider taking up, go ahead and put those in the comments as well. And we'll, we'll see, maybe we'll explore some different directions here in 2023. Thanks for watching.